of street life. It is your responsibility to take care of us. Do your job. <laughs> Put your money where your mouth is and stand with the people of Seattle, or will you stand with the police union and the big developers and landlords who fund your campaigns? Don't tell us you support affordable housing, show us. But yes, I support this measure for two main reasons. First, it will provide the space for 1,000 families to find stable, affordable housing, which we desperately need. But second, this project uses the money originally earmarked for the North Police Precinct, and this will ensure that the bunker stays blocked. Militarized policing and luxury accommodations for the SPD is not the priority over getting homeless families out of the streets. You have a concrete choice in front of you. Will you stand with the needs of the people or will you listen to the lobbyists? We've heard a lot of excuses, but we want a thousand homes, not a thousand excuses, right? Right. Wow. This January, the annual one night count found 10,000 homeless people in King County, 4,500 living outside, and almost 3,000 living uh, outside in Seattle alone. This year, I'm sure the problem has worsened. And that does not include the tens of thousands of working Seattleites and their children who have a home but are one layoff, one medical emergency, or one rent hike away from joining the ranks of the homeless. The Seattle Times recently reported that 47%, nearly half of the renters in the city, pay more than 30% of their income in rent, which, in economists' rule of thumb, says that they are in critical need of affordable housing. There is no question that we are in the midst of an affordable housing crisis in our city, and elected officials have a duty to treat this crisis with all the seriousness that it deserves. I have a long list of people I want to say thank you to. First, I want to thank the Build 1000 Homes Coalition. I think it is important to recognize all the organizations who have endorsed this budget amendment and sacrificed your time and made immense efforts to build a movement that forced this issue on the agenda of the city. I think there can be no doubt whatsoever in our minds and in the minds of the media that this proposal has the absolute recommendation from the majority of the community in Seattle. And if some elected officials have made the argument that we do not need to build a thousand affordable homes or that we have done enough, I think. This is absurd given how unaffordable rents have become and our swelling homeless population. The 75 organizations that I listed <coughs> off do not agree that we have done enough. And regular people in Seattle clearly think this is so important that they voted in overwhelming numbers to support the last housing levy. They voted to tax themselves to sacrifice their own incomes because they think affordable housing is that important. And then it is up to us elected officials to meet their priorities. In fact, this one budget amendment would build as much affordable housing as over three years of the housing levy. So it is, many elected officials have raised concerns about whether it is fiscally responsible to do this project of 1,000 homes. But let's be crystal clear. This project is no riskier than the financing model for the North Precinct because that's where we got the model. But how can anybody with a straight face argue that the precinct was worth that risk but affordable housing is not. All the hard-working activists and organizers in the Build 1000 Homes Coalition, your efforts are what have forced affordable housing onto the agenda, even though many politicians have a way of dodging it. All those in favor of adopting the green sheet, please vote aye and raise your hand. Aye. Those opposed to the green sheet, vote no and raise your hand. The motion fails. So the vote was seven to two against building 1,000 homes. And then on the second measure for $29 million, the vote was seven to two in favor. I've never seen a budget amendment for $30 million, especially not one that unequivocally goes to help the needs of ordinary people. As far as I can see, this is virtually unprecedented. It's a huge step forward. The reality is we need far more than a thousand homes. A thousand homes, like, like Adam was saying, the opportunity was brought up because of the work of the Block the Bunker Coalition, but we also can't stop there. And we're gonna need to build until, there should, there's no reason, no good reason, why there should be one person in Seattle living on the streets, struggling to get by, 
the wealth that we have in the city is incredible. And the excuses, I think, um, highlighted by President by uh, Burgess, uh, really put forward that when working people want something, all of a sudden there's no money. All of a sudden it's fiscally irresponsible. But that he was in support of using those same fiscally irresponsible measures to fund a police precinct that we don't need and that will go to further oppressing communities that most need to be lifted up. The work here today laid the basis for that. When they come back and try to fund that precinct, we will be there and Shama will be there to put back on the agenda a thousand more affordable housing units with that money. And we need to be there. Our coalition is gonna go on because it's this grassroots movement that won the $15 an hour minimum wage, that won tenants' rights, and we have another, this move-in fees legislation is coming up, and I encourage everyone to be active. And, and it's that that brought $30 million into, home, into homes, and it's that that can actually solve a crisis which has been acknowledged in this city for over a decade with the coalition to end homelessness, but it's not until now until a grassroots movement was pulled together that we actually started to see real movement. And that's the power that people have that they don't want to admit, but they are forced to recognize. And that's your power. So whether or not they want to say Shama Sawant had nothing to do with this, whatever, she'll be the first to say she doesn't care because the real force behind this is all of you and everyone that came out. And that's, that's the engine that allows this office to be able to get anything done. It's extremely uh, powerful and everyone should be very proud of the work that you've all done.